You know, it's interesting. This season, we had two very similar animes with very similar premises. They didn't f no, feel like it at first, but as the both went through, I definitely felt that. In both the forms of Kizai Niver and Miyagi-Yo The Lost Village. Both are meant to be character studies into human emotion and how we react to certain situations. Both feature large casts, predominantly focusing on what makes them imperfect and or damaged. And on top of that, both feature female characters who play to my weird fetishes. But where one, Kizai Niver, has been all in all positively received, though it, again, not perfect, but all in all people seem to like it, the other has been pretty much panned and was definitely one of the ones people were more mocking by the time the spring season ended. And I am here to answer that question, why did one work more than the other in the form of a review for miyagi -Oh. uh, So let's get started with this series. Um, its basic facts are is a 2016 anime that was written by the author of another, I don't have his name, but I'm putting it right here. And so this series got hype around it just based on who made it. Now I have never seen another and I don't want to because it looks scary don't make me but I was curious going into it. it had a very interesting premise that had a very high risk high reward type situation to it you see the plot to this show is that it follows a busload of people literally they're, they're on a bus um, follows a bunch of people who solved an internet quiz that led them to this mysterious organization that has discovered a lost village and the goal is to go to this village and have these people who are fed up with normal society build a new society just to all themselves. Now immediately going into that premise, I like that it's different. It's original. You don't, again, there have been stuff about people building their own society before, but this felt unique, original, different, just the way it was phrased, just the way it was worded. Uh, but the thing is, this is a very high risk, high reward situation because you have a cast of people who don't want to be in our society anymore, which means that they're either all going to come across as jackasses just because they think they're better than everyone else or they're all going to have a bunch of sob stories and the show just becomes clicking onto whose sob story we're going to focus on now. But I was still curious and based on the first episode, everything was going pretty good. Like, the first episode of the show is great. If you're going to watch anything, just watch the first episode. Um, basically, and it starts off very small. We get all the information I just said within the first 10 seconds. And all the episode is is introducing, like, 30 characters and just having them give, like, a little information about themselves. They all use, like, their internet screen name, so we don't even learn their true names. We're just learning what they want us to know. And that is kind of creepy. The music is underplayed. Most of the score is just the sounds of the bus. It's a dark, creepy fog night you're hearing these backstories some people have a normal thing to say some have weird things to say some have things to say that maybe creep you out a bit and you just start wondering about it it's very toned down it's very restrained and it is very creepy um, and even the characters at first looked like they were going to work. You have your lead protagonist, Mitsumune, who has that same generic look I keep pointing out in everything lately. You have his standard best friend. You have several potential love interests. You have this whole cast that, again, with 30 characters, it seems like it's going to be hard to give them all the screen time they need. But if the show can pull it off, then it'll all work. The show does not pull it off. Not even remotely. So first up, part of the problem with the characters is A, our lead, Mitsumune. He's just an annoying, nicey do-gooder. I can't stand these characters where they're only one thing you learn about them for the entire time is that they're nice, and then towards the end we're going to justify them just being nice with some bullshit backstory. And oh my god, I'm not going to spoil it here in case any of you still want to watch it, but man is this guy's backstory annoying and manipulative. And that's what I can say about a lot of the way the emotions are handled in this show. Remember when I said in Keys I Never it focused solely on the emotions? Well, in this series, it pretty much only ever wants you to feel something when it's about to either make you want to feel sorry for someone or something really bad is about to happen. That's called being emotionally manipulative. In Kizai Never, whatever anyone was feeling was just part of the situation that was happening. Here, everyone just Whenever we focus on someone, it comes out of nowhere, it goes nowhere, and you can usually tell it's just set up for something stupid. And part of the problem is that this show tries to have a fantasy element to it, where a lot of people, it was just marketed as a mystery. Now, I think the fantasy element was told to us ahead of time, but it was not what they were trying to give us. It was supposed to be a mystery. What is the lost village? What's happening to these people? Where's it all going? 
it never gets interesting. It unfortunately, it's very obvious what's going on. Even the villain is incredibly obvious. Again, I won't spoil it here, but you'll know it the minute they show up on screen. And part of what makes this even feel worse is the show even thinks it's a lot smarter than it really is. It does every generic, cheesy trick in the book, which wouldn't be a problem if it didn't take itself very seriously, okay? It, it wouldn't be as bad a problem. But the show thinks it's so much smarter and so much more dramatic and so much more serious and I can't stand that because it just puts me in this situation where I just feel like I'm being manipulated. Again, even the other characters are all just annoying. No one gets any screen time for more than 10 seconds and even when a character is kind of interesting, we don't really spend enough time with them because we're just spending 25 minutes giving everyone a line or two. On top of that, even the supernatural element, not only is it generic, but it makes no sense. It's never given enough time, it's never developed correctly. And all in all, I just found the whole series to be just a giant mess. It's got some good ideas, but it goes nowhere. Now, is there anything I legitimately liked? Well, some of the characters are likable and are interesting. Um, our leading lady isn't bad, um, although by the end of the series, her character makes absolutely no sense. Um, you've got a... Okay, this is going to sound weird. This is a little bit of a tangent, but I want to say this. The character I was talking about in my joke at the beginning actually is a really cool character. She's like a private investigator who you get the feeling is more just doing this to know what's going on than anything else. And she is, she's not fat, but she is heavier. I mean, let's be real here. Most women in the media, rather animated or live action, are meant to be attractive, sexy. And the thing is, they're often made out to be very thin. Well, as a chubby American, I kind of wouldn't mind every now and again seeing more women who look kind of like my kinds of people. And I liked it because she even felt like they still gave her like some attractiveness to her. So all in all, I liked her. The bus driver is actually super interesting and a super well-written character. Too bad he was wasted on this show. I also have this little girl named Lion, who I thought was also really cool and really neat. But once again, she gets no screen time. All the actors are trying really hard, and some get across some good lines and some funny jokes every once in a while, but it's all wasted. And the last character I'm just going to bring up real fast is this guy. He's not interesting, he's not likable or anything like that, but he's so wacky and over the top that every time he's on screen, he's like the 8,000 pound gorilla in the room. You just stare at him because you don't really know what else to do, so I'll give it points for that. All in all, this really could have been a good show. There's a, several interesting ideas at play. Oh, and the score is very nice. But at the end of the day, it chose to execute itself in the most generic way possible. Really didn't do anything interesting. To make this show work, I think you really needed a director or writers who know how to deal with weird characters. Someone like the guy who did Keys I Never most recently. Or if we're going big, let's go with the guy who did Do Ra Ra Ra. People who know how to work with these very weird, very off-putting, and sometimes disturbing characters. You need that for a show like this, but unfortunately you just got stuck with a very generic execution, and all in all, it's one of the more forgettable shows of this season. Unless you're looking for something that's like so bad it's good, I have heard a lot of people who had a good time just laughing at the stupidity of this one. So if you're into that, and if you want to watch that, more power to you, go for it. But all in all, I'd say this is a pretty skippable one. But what did you think? In the comments section below, give me your thoughts on The Lost Village, and anything you thought was interesting from this previous anime season and what you're looking watching currently because there's a lot of interesting stuff coming out and as always click to like and click to subscribe so hopefully we can talk about something more memorable next time